Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the radical polymerization of ethene and present its mechanism as one more example of radical mechanisms. Uh, just to give you a sense of what I mean by uh, radical polymerization or polymerization in general, um, polymerization is any process in which you take a small molecule in this case, our small molecule is ethene, and you convert it into a polymer, where a polymer has many repeat units. And notation for a polymer often involves uh, the use of some parentheses or brackets uh, to represent the repeating structure, and then to have a, a lowercase n down there to, rep rep to represent this thing happening multiple times. Here we have a polymer or poly from Many and mer meaning, meaning a, a chemical thing. The thing that polymer a polymer is made out of is called a monomer, meaning one of these things, one unit, multiple units. And in general, the balanced chemical equation is simply uh, we have some n units of our monomer that are converted into a polymer with n repeating units. In, in that polymer chain. Uh, <clears throat> this reaction is an addition reaction, and it turns out there are electrophilic versions, but radical uh, polymerization is one of the most common ways to do polymerization. So let's add a radical initiator, like a peroxide. Uh, and then just before I go into the mechanism, just one more time, that was introduced in this polymer. This polymer is CH2CH2 repeating over and over. Important to, to sort of just wrap your head around what this is. It's a long chain of CH2CH2. It comes from the, the ethene monomer, CH2CH2. And as the polymer grows, the pi bond in ethene is converted into sigma bond between the monomer units. So the radical version of the mechanism, uh, it's radical mechanism, so it starts with initiation. And since we have a radical initiator, that's going to be involved. And everything, of course, that the radical initiator does is going to be part of the initiation step as the radical initiator isn't shown in the structure of the product, though you'll see that that's not necessarily 100% accurate. Two alkoxy radicals, and we'll draw in my arrow. Give me a moment, reaction arrow. Okay. Now the second thing that happens is that one of these alkoxy radicals is going to react with one of the ethylene monomers. Let's show what that looks like. Okay, and uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm not going to show the carbon and hydrogen labels. Uh, you just need to, to, to put on uh, your thinking cap and remember that they're there. And so the second addition step looks like this. It's our second initiation step is an addition step. It looks like this. And then I am going to, even though I showed the, the arrows, oh, here, let's... I am going to draw. 
See, forgive me, I was thinking about drawing it so that the, the alkoxy group was on the left side of the chain, but then I changed my mind. Propagation step for radical polymerization is really simple. There is, in fact, only one propagation step. And that propagation step, well, there are lots of propagation steps, but there's really only one kind of thing that's going on here. That propagation step involves our, our chain as it is growing with a radical at the end of it. Whoops. There we go. Again, I'm peculiar about the way my arrows look. Uh, so that if the chain as it's growing, reacting with another molecule of ethylene. And so our polymer chain is going to grow by two CH2 units. Or originally we had two carbon chain, now we have four. And... It's just going to keep happening over and over and over and over. And as it keeps happening, the chain is going to get longer and longer. And the number of times that this can happen is going to depend upon uh, the amount of ethylene that's present and the amount of initiator that is present. So, oh. the number of polymer chains that we're going to form is going to be two times the number of initiator molecules. Each initiator molecule breaks in half to form two alkoxy radicals, and every chain has an alkoxy radical at the end of it. Now the reason why when we show the balanced equation we don't draw the alkoxy radical is because the chain is almost 100% CH2s. There is an alkoxy group all the way all the way at the end, but this end might be 100 or 1,000 or 100,000 or 2 million. Um, and so the contribution to the formula, the mass, uh, everything of that alkoxy group is minimal. And so it's usually not represented but at the end of every chain is some kind of radical initiator. And then you know, the average length of your chain is going to depend on how many ethene molecules you have uh, divided by the total number of chains. So if you have uh, five chains, well, that's not going to be possible. You need to at least have, have an even number of chains. So you have 10 chains, you put in 100 ethene molecules, your chains on average are going to be 10 ethene molecule or 10 ethene units long uh, with some variation. Under ideal circumstances, propagation continues until ethene is exhausted. Or until termination occurs. And termination is a big deal because termination can lead to ch chains of irregular length, can lead to short chains uh, when you would rather have long chains. It turns out that the properties of, of polyethylene and all kinds of other polymers uh, depends a lot on the chain length and the, the range of chain length. So you know, a polymer with narrow range of chain lengths is going to behave differently, have different physical properties than a polymer with a wide range of chain lengths, even at uh, the same average chain length. There are two common termination steps. There's really one common termination step, and it's the, the abstraction elimination step. 
uh, thing that I that I talked about in the video on termination. And so in this case, in the abstraction elimination case, what we have are, are two chains. And these we'll just use short chains for the moment, but we have two chains, both with radicals on the end of them. And the radical at the end of one chain abstracts a hydrogen from the end of the other chain, which then leads to elimination on that second chain. This is the most common form of termination. First chain, the, the chain on the left is terminating by forming a, uh, by elimination, forming an alkene. The chain on the right is terminated by abstracting a hydrogen, so it forms a, a CH3. And both of these chains are done. Now, if this is occurring because uh, we've run out of ethene, then these chains are going to have similar average length. But if this is occurring because of some hiccup in the process, then generally you would, would like to avoid that. And, and there's a lot more that can be said about radical polymerization and in terms of different kinds of alkenes and other, other types of processes and how you might uh, engineer different types of properties or different uh, chain length distributions uh, using other kinds of catalysts or initiators or different conditions. The very last thing though that I want to talk about, at least in the case of polyethylene, is branching. Um, another thing that can happen in an, a polyethylene polymer is if you have your growing polymer chain come in contact with another chain, but we're going to not we're going to get rid of the radical here. Instead of abstracting a, ra a hydrogen from the end of a growing chain, maybe it's abstracting a hydrogen from the middle of a chain. And this case is not a termination because we're not losing well, it's a termination for the chain on the top anyway. It's not a termination for the chain on the bottom. It's leading to a new radical in the middle of the chain, and that's a secondary radical. So there's some thermodynamic driving force to form this new secondary radical. Actually, let's get rid of this chain here. And then this secondary radical can go on and make uh, more uh, polymer chains, but do it from the middle. And so rather than, and I don't have a lot of room, uh, it can continue to grow. And now you have this branched chain. And if you're familiar with the different types of polyethylene in, in, in uh, commercial plastics, you might know that there's high density polyethylene and low density polyethylene. High density polyethylene is prepared in a way that minimizes chain branching and low density polyethylene has a lot of chain branching. So this is gonna conclude our series of videos on radical mechanisms. Uh, next series of videos is gonna cover uh, some other issues about uh, useful radical reactions for the synthesis of organic molecules. Thank you for watching.